how EB works and how it is supposed to design electronic circuits on its own. We can say it in one sentence. EB finds the best components that match the features you ask it for. In order to design electronic circuits, EB uses the system view. That sounds complicated, I know, but in fact, it's not. This model consists in visualizing things as boxes, which exchange resources with the outside and contain other boxes. That's it. For example, let's take this little house. Inside this house, there are many other things, subsystems like the television, the boiler, the dishwasher, etc. And this house is connected to the water network, the road network, the electric network, and so on to make them functional. From now on, in the system view, the house will be considered like this. This model will allow us to make some very interesting simplifications using three fundamental principles. First, the abstraction. The magic of abstraction is that in order for this house to be functional, that is to keep humans warm and safe, it only needs to be connected to the networks it requires to function. The managers of the city, for example, know precisely enough what the house consumes, and so they can build a city full of houses without needing to know what happens inside. This principle is useful and applicable on the condition that we add another one, the standardization. Another example to get closer to the electronics is this. When you see this, you understand USB, which is a connector, a symbol, and a name. When a hardware engineer hears USB, he understands D plus D minus, five volt, and ground pin. Okay, standards again, but just a little more detailed. The USB creator, and the engineer who is in debugging mode, see sequence of zero and one. No standardization at this level. EB is here. It sees a name, a type of resource needed by some system to be powered on or programmed. It knows electronics as much as you and me, things that exchange names with parameters. All these types, these names, these standards, are represented in EB as a tree, which will always be the same for all projects because it contains all possible resources on Earth. It should, at least. Now, I will try to explain the little twist I made to allow the automatization of all this. In electronics, resources are often considered either input or output or both or we don't know. It's a paradigm that is useful at a very low design level to determine which way the information is going. What I propose is to no longer say input and output but needed and offered. Instead of talking about direction, we talk in terms of offer and demand. We consider what functionalities are offered by a system and what are its needs. That is to say the resource offered by other system that will be connected to it. You get the point. So we went through all of the theory. Still there? Good. Now comes the magic. The joint use of the last three principles allows us to reduce everything to a single one question. Does it work or not? When a system receives all the resources it needs, then we consider that it works and that it can effectively offer its functionality to the rest of the global system, to its environment. If not, we have to add another system that can provide what is needed. When all the system receives what they need, we say that the parent system, the global system, is functional. So EB needs to find new components until it all turns green. And this is the algorithm of EB. So simple, right? So simple. Let's go back to the example we show in the main video. The goal, 
as I hope you understood, was to make a system that allows us to play drums without drums by measuring the acceleration and the, and the direction of the user's strokes. So this circuit needs to measure acceleration, orientation, and has to be able to communicate by Bluetooth and with an RGB indicator. Now let's enter these four features in this tool. You can parameterize resources or leave it by default, depending on uh, the involvement you want to have. But in general, it's better to leave it like this. Our circuit in the system view will be represented as follows. With the four resources offered to the outside because it's features. Each resource is marked in red now because there is no system that actually provides these features. So now EB needs to find them, and it does it automatically by searching the database for the best component that can match one or more of these requirements. Here EB proposed first the LIS3, uh, which is a three-axis magnetometer that offers a feature of measuring the orientation of the circuit. And when we will add it, EB will connect all the resources that can be connected and the first resource is supplied. As a result, in the circuit, there are new resources requested to be supplied. Those are needed by the LIS. We fall back into the initial problem and we repeat the loop as many times as necessary. So after some iterations, the circuit is designed all good, it works. Until now, everything was virtual. Now let's consider that each of the previous system, these boxes, contain physical components inside. In electronics, we call it the layout. And here we are in real world. For the beginners, you just have to place the component group and trigger the auto router, which will draw the copper tracks between the components to physically connect them. For the followers, you can route your circuit manually on two layers for now. To check that everything is well done, that there is no short circuit or missing tracks, EB runs what we call a DRC, Design Rules Check, which will indicate design errors or even supply problems. For the production of the board itself, the manufacturing, it's possible to order the board in one click. Your circuit will be automatically ordered and manufactured by our partner PCBWay in China. We have an agreement with them that allows us to use their API to send the production file and to get an immediate quote as well as the validation of the circuit.